make announcements. Daniel Trout for the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. T.D. Hammonds for Mom, Gloria Goucher. We're here and ready, Judge. Ben Snowak on behalf of the father, Russell Peterson. I'm, I'm here with my client, Judge, and we are ready. Stacey Zabala on behalf of the child, here and ready. And my apologies. <clears throat> I went to an inclusion training last week, and I know my bad habit of saying you guys uh, is sexist <laughs> and bad. So I apologize for that. I'm working, I'm working on that. I promise. I call your first witness. Um, I believe we call Russell Peterson first. John. Well, we're going to, uh, I don't imagine you've been a witness in a case before, have you? Yes, sir. I have. I actually oh. have a law degree. Oh, oh, awesome. Well, then you, I won't give you all the explanation I give people sometimes, but the video makes it kind of hard. So if somebody objects or something, just give me a little second delay to, to rule on those. Okay. Absolutely. Okay, and great. Go right Mr. Ahead. Peterson, you're on the road right now. Is that correct? I am currently on the road. Yes. I'm almost back in Texas. Okay. And you are um, the father of the child that's the subject of this case. Uh, is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, now, this case got started from when the child was born at the hospital. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, there was an incident that got called in involving you um, and a possible or your criminal record from Michigan as a juvenile. Is that correct? That is correct. However, the uh, it was found that I am not required to register. Yes, and I, I was on the so charge. So there's no restrictions. Is that correct? Correct. That is absolutely correct. Okay. Um, are you still required to register your residence once a year? Once a year, yes, only the residence. Okay. And just so the court knows, we're talking about we're talking about a um, offender registry that you have to register for due to an um, incident when you were young. Yes, and just so that we can clarify to the courts, it was for urinating in public when I was fourteen. I was charged with gross indecency and indecent exposure. Yes, sir. Okay. Now. Um, after that all happened, the department began working with y'all. Is that correct? That is correct. You were allowed to um, take the child from the hospital and y'all were put up in a hotel. That is correct. Okay. Um, before that, were you and, um, are you and Miss, let me remember how to say your last name, Sona? Goucher. Um, Goucher. Are y'all, y'all are married? Not legally, no. Okay. So do you consider yourself common law married, just been together? Pretty much. We've been together almost 13 years. Okay. Um, now, before the child was born, were y'all living in the sleeper of the truck? Well, we have a house in Michigan. However, it's falling apart. So technically, yes, we were. Okay. So I'll clarify on that. So you were, while you've been in Texas, you've been living in the sleeper of the truck. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Um, but once y'all left the hospital, did... CPS department, where did they pay for two weeks of the hotel room for you? Yes, they did. Okay. Um, and then you went back out on the road when? As a local driver, yes. And just so that we can clarify that too, I'm a, I am a local driver. I work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Saturday, eight to four. Okay. The only reason I'm in Michigan or the only reason they sent me up to Michigan was because I just had to get my license renewed because yesterday was my birthday. Okay. But you were, um, after the baby was born, when did you go back to work? <laughs> Uh, it was about four days after. Okay. Um, and what kicked off the removal and what happened after that, you came home from the road. Is that correct? That is correct. And you found Ms. Goucher in the hotel room. Correct. Um, was she unresponsive? She was unresponsive, had absolutely, um, no breath at all and no pulse. Okay. Um, when you came in and found her that way, was the baby, where was the baby? Uh, the baby was in the car seat. Okay. Was it on the bed, on the floor? Where was it? On the bed. On the bed. Okay. So you came home, mom's unresponsive on the bed, baby's on the bed, whether in a car seat. Correct. Okay. Um, did you know why mom was unresponsive? Do you know whether she had taken anything, drank anything? I walked in the room and found five 24-ounce uh, cans of beer sitting on the table. So I had put two and two together that she had more than likely – gotten alcohol poisoning and was unconscious because of it. Okay. Um, did you give her Narcan at that time? I, I did, okay. yes, because she was unresponsive to chest compressions as well as the sternum rub. Okay. Um, do you personally know what Narcan is used for? I do, yes. It's used for overdoses. Okay. Did you suspect mom had 
overdose. With what I heard from the lady next door, yes, that is the reason why I had administered uh, Narcan. Okay. What did um, what did you think she had overdosed on? Morphine. Okay. Um, so when you said a second ago you came home and put two and two together that it was beer, it was more than that, right? That's what I was under the impression of, yes. Okay. Um, <clears throat> then mom came back around. Correct. What, is that when the well, she came? She, no, she actually came back around. I was doing chest compressions when uh, APD arrived okay. and APD took over. And now you, you called APD, is that correct? That is correct. <clears throat> okay. Um, did you hear mom say anything to paramedic or APD at the time as far as what she had done? She, the responding, the original responding officer had came into the room. Um, once we finally got her awake and alert, um, asked her what she did. She said she drank and she had taken morphine. The officer then asked her where she got the morphine from. She said the hospital. And by that time, I was literally furious. I grabbed my child and I walked out of the room and just went and stood outside. Okay. Did um, did the hospital send her home with morphine? Negative. Okay. Do you know where she got the morphine? Not a clue. Okay. Did they send her home with any medication? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. So um, after she had the baby, they didn't give her any type of... Um, strong ibuprofen, Tylenol three, anything like that that you know of. Well, I know, I know they gave her. Um, I think it was a prescription for uh, Motrin or ibuprofen five hundreds or eight hundreds or whatever. Okay. But she never went and got it filled. Okay, so that that's gonna be my next question. So y'all never went to a pharmacy to fill anything. Correct. Okay. Um, now, did she after she became responsive? Did she go um, to the hospital to be checked out, or did she refuse? Negative. She refused. Okay. Um, what happened after that? After paramedics and APD left, what happened? So after paramedics and APD left that day, um, that's when uh, APD, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Casey, please, but I do believe that is when APD had made a report to Child Protective Services about what had happened. Okay. Um, did you and mom get in an argument in the parking lot after that? No, there was no argument in the parking lot. The, and it wasn't even an argument. It was basically me telling her that I was done and she messed up big time. Okay. And I had, during that time, um, somebody else had already called the police on her because she was walking around the parking lot drunk. Okay. And when the police showed up, I had, you know, I was having really bad chest pains and ended up collapsing in the parking lot okay. and was found out that I had died. So later that night, I had ended up having really bad chest pains when the, um, you know, right before police had showed up and I didn't know that anybody had called the police to report her for being drunk in the parking lot. Yeah. Um, I ended up collapsing in the parking lot due to a heart attack. I ended up having a heart attack in the parking lot as well as a very, very, very small stroke. Yeah. I ended up, the police ended up telling me that I had died in the parking lot. And then I also died in the back of the ambulance. Yeah. I ended up being taken down to BSA where I had to have a heart cath done, two stints and a heart valve replaced. Okay. Um, and how long ago was that? When was that? Uh, that was on the 20th of April. Okay. Um, so after all, just my clarification, after all those procedures, you're cleared to drive and they came with it that is correct. Yes. I'm clear to drive and I have to basically what the doctor said is take it easy, which my job's easy as it is. I don't do anything heavy. There's no, you know, there's nothing heavy that I lift or anything like that. Um, and my doctor asked me if I was over the road or if I was local, I told him I'm local, which I am. I'm home every night. Um, and he said that that was the main reason that he was going to clear me is because it was a minimally invasive surgery. A new heart valve was minimally invasive. Yes, they went in through my groin and did it. They had to put in a new vein. Okay. Um, after that, do you know what happened to mom in this case? Where did, what happened to her? Somebody, you said somebody called in a report of her being intoxicated. Yeah, she was arrested for public intoxication. Okay. And the um, at that point, baby was removed because you were in the hospital and mom was in jail, correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, did you know the people next to the room? They're in the room next to y'all. I 
yes, we, we communicate with them all the time. Um, as far as me leaving my child with them, APD had told me that I could not have my child at the hospital with me and asked me if there was anybody like friends or family that I could leave her with because I could not take her to the hospital. And APD is the one that literally took her next door to the next room over. Okay. Did, um, now you said y'all had met these people and talked to them and gotten to know them. Um, were you aware of any of their past? Not at the time. I was not. Okay. Um, and on with that, do you have other children? Do you and Ms. Gatcher have other children? Yes. I have. Yes. I, we have four other children. Okay. And where are they? They are with my mom down in Florida. All of them? Yes. Okay. Um, basically, my mom basically takes them six months out of the year. So basically, when it's wintertime in Michigan, she takes them down to Florida because my mom lives on the beach. And my kids are like 110% like totally in love with their grandmother. Okay. Have you um, ever had CPS history in Michigan? In where? In Michigan. Uh, there was one other time in Michigan, yes. Just one? As that I know of, yes. Okay. Have you ever had uh, any fraternity rights terminated in Michigan? Yes, to my uh, youngest. Okay. Because they, they included both of them at the same time in Michigan. Okay. So your mother in Florida doesn't you were terminated on, so your mother in Florida doesn't have all your children. One was terminated yes. on. No, it was terminated against me. My mother has them. Okay. Was the uh, Did your mother adopt? Or did they just place down there? With Pretty much. Okay. So the, the way we operate it is they're, they're, the two are still mine. Okay. They um, know me as their dad. And is Ms. Goucher, is she the mother to all of these? Or is these? Yes. That she's the mother to all. Okay. Um. And so what was that CPS case? What did it involve? You said you only had one. What did it involve? That was, of course, again, Gloria's, you know, disorderly conduct that she got arrested for the drinking all the time. And it was just constant, you know, just domestic, you know, I'm trying to not cuss, but domestic bull crap that yeah. went on. All right. Um, have you ever had any... Um, Domestic violence issues. Have I? Yes, that I've been accused of that I've never been like actually charged for. They've all been dropped against me. Did any of those um, result in some sort of CPS investigation? Not that I can recall. OK. Um, was there a domestic domestic violence situation in 2016 uh, while you were holding one of the children? While I was holding one of the children, that was an accusation that was made that was not true. Um, let, let, let's just put it like this. Michigan CPS is the worst people around. They make accusations against anybody. They do anything to just try to open a case so that they can get paid. Okay. Um, now, and that's been proven in uh, federal. Objection, non -responsive. Russell, uh, uh, objection, non-responsive. Russell, please listen to the questions and only answer the questions you're asked, please. Um, now, are you still working for, um, Rocky T, is that who you work for? Yes, that's who I work for. Okay. And where where all of y'all now you're a trucker, so y'all move around, right? Is that correct? No, we don't. What do you mean? Can you clarify move around, please? Where all have you lived? Just Michigan and Texas. Okay. Um Texas as of recent. Okay. Never you never lived in Florida where your mom lives? Nope. Okay. Nope. Um ever been to Kentucky? No, we've never lived in Kentucky. Okay. Uh, now, do you also have a warrant for you in another state? Yes, I do. That is a non-extradition warrant. And can I ask what this pertains to? This does not pertain to this case. Can uh, we please get back on focus? Your Honor, if I may, I'm asking questions, not the defendant on this one. Sure, if you'll answer his questions. Uh, excuse me, the parent, not the defendant. I apologize for that language. <laughs> so, yes, you do have a warrant from another state. That is correct. That is a non-extradition warrant. They will not cross state lines to pick me up. Okay. Um, now, during the course of the case, when y'all were working with CPS, did you tell Ms. Swahart on the 19th of April that your father's passed away in Michigan and y'all were going back for a funeral? 
We were going to, yes, I was going to go back for a funeral, correct. Did was it? But I father? never made it up there because I did not. It was my stepdad. Okay, so you have a father and a stepdad, is that? And that is correct. And I'll get to my point on this one. So on the twenty fourth, after you got out of the hospital, um, you stated that you didn't hadn't been working, didn't have the money to pay for the room, so you were calling your father had paid for the room. So we're talking about two different people. Is that correct? My my biological father. I do not consent. I do not consent. Consider him my father. My stepdad is my father. I also call Gloria's dad my father. Okay. Because he's like a dad to me. So, so let's if clarify. I misspoke, I apologize. No, no, no. That's, I'm just trying to clarify. So your stepfather passed away on the 19th. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Who is the father you were referring to that paid the hotel bill on the 24th? Brian Goucher, Gloria's dad. Okay. All right. That's, I'm just trying to clarify that. Thank you. Where are y'all currently living now? Right now, we're at America's Best Value Inn. Okay. Did y'all? I do have two applications filled out for a house, and I should be hearing back today whether I get approved for the house here in Amarillo or not. It's a two bedroom, two bath house. Okay. Um, are y'all getting kicked out of the Best Value? Uh, she is. I'm not. So when you get back to town, you'll have that room? Yes, I will. Okay. And you're 100% sure on that? Uh, as far as I know, I talked with the owner this morning, and okay. he said that I could stay. Okay. Um, did you ask um, Ms. Wahart if CPS could pay for a room at the Springwood Suites? Wood Spring Suites, I did, and that was until that was before I had spoken with Al for a second time. Um, right now, because of me being off of work for as long as I was because of my heart attack, everything I do this week I get paid for next week. I'm covered until the 10th on the hotel room right now at America's Best. The 12th would be Friday. So of course I'm covered until the 10th. So I would, that's why I had, you know, to see, I had called her to see if she could do two more days on the room just until I get paid on Friday, then I can take care of the bill myself. Okay. Um, why are, why are y'all getting, or according to you, why is uh, Ms. Goucher getting kicked out of the? Uh, from what I was told by the owner this morning is the constant drinking. I left Saturday. Gloria has been drinking every day since. And she has been causing a whole bunch of problems at the hotel. There's been several complaints that have been called into the front office. There have been um, several complaints of her going into other guys' rooms. And I, of course, knew none of this except for pictures and phone calls from the front office. Yeah. Uh, so right I can send you... Casey and my attorney the pictures. Okay. So you said right now you are local driver, but they sent you, you had to go to Michigan. Is that right? That is correct to renew my driver's license. Okay. Um, do you know if they will send you on a long trip for a couple of days at a time again? Negative. I run local and local only. Okay. Um, my, my routes consist of running from Amarillo to Liberal, Kansas, and then from Liberal, Kansas back to Amarillo. It's literally 123 miles one way and 123 miles back. Okay. Okay. Uh, what kind of arrangements would you have if the child was returned to you? I do have uh, two daycares that I contacted that would be willing to watch my child for me while I'm at work. Um, however, at the time, I did not realize that the state would cover, you know, the, the daycare charges if needed, which they should not have to because I make more than enough money to cover it. Um, if they choose not to cover that, I have talked with the ladies at work who bring their kids up to, you know, to, to work with them. Um, they have volunteered as well to watch my children. Okay. So what daycares are those? Um, I don't remember the names off the top of my head. Casey, can you tell them which ones they are, please? Yes, Your Honor. The, Mr. Peterson's on the stand right now, not Ms. Well. So we can ask her when it's her turn. Um, so you don't know the name of the daycares? I forgot the name of them. Okay. Um, how long have you been on the road right now? Uh, are you talking like how long have I been a truck driver or how no, long have I been? Your current trip that you're on. How long? Have you oh, been? I, I left Saturday. Okay. So you've been gone almost, well, five days. Correct. I'll, I'll be back uh, tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, what would have happened to the child had you had the child and been on the road for five days? If I had my child? Mm -hmm. Yes. My child would my child would have been in the passenger seat properly secured. 
Sorry. Um, does does Miss Goucher have a have an issue with substance abuse, alcohol, drugs that you know of? Alcohol, yes. Just alcohol. Yes. Um, and you you are aware? How long has she had this problem that you've been aware of? On and off for about five years. Okay. Well, five to seven years on and off because her mom died seven years ago of alcohol poisoning. So it's been on and off for the last seven. Okay. Um, and you're, we're comfortable leaving the baby with her. Is that correct? That is not correct. No. Okay. But you, when you came back and found her unresponsive on the 20th, you had left the baby with her, correct? Yes. That is because I was not aware that she was back to drinking. Okay. Um, was she, now you said she took the morphine that you didn't know where she got that is according to her. Um, that's what I was informed of. Yes. Is that the first time you've ever known her to use a substance like that? As far as I know, yes. Okay. And I don't even know if she used it. I'm just going off of what she had told the police and okay. EMS. Well, but you gave her Narcan without knowing Correct. what she had taken. Correct. Okay. Um, are you in the, do you believe you're in the position to take a newborn as a, if you're, let me rephrase, back up and rephrase. Are you, when you get back to town, are you planning on being together with Ms. Goucher? Negative. Not until she gets help. Okay. And what kind of help are you wanting to look at? Are you talking inpatient or just some sort of counseling? I am talking intensive, as I had already spoken with uh, Mr. Nowak about, um, I'm talking like intensive counseling, alcohol, you know, anything and everything that can be offered to her to help with her alcohol addiction. Okay. And because it has gotten way out of hand. Okay. And understand that you want somebody you care about to get help. Are you, um, if that took 90 days, say three months, are you equipped right now being a truck driver on the road to take care of a newborn baby? Yes, I am. Even after having major heart um, procedures? Yes. I've already been cleared by my doctor. Um, I'll pass the witness at this time. And, and Russell, for the judge's benefit, you're wearing a ball cap in a courtroom today. Is that because your headset is attached to your ball cap? That is correct. I do apologize, Your Honor, in advance. I, I apologize. It's the only thing that keeps it on my head. Gotcha. I'm not a stickler about those kind of things. I didn't even notice it, quite frankly. So some, zero. Some, some judges are. I, I've seen a lawyer have to like literally go put on a suit in a store. <laughs> hey, hey, Russell, uh, you get back tomorrow. Yes, I should be back. Well, not should be. I will be back tomorrow, anywhere between 11 and 1 tomorrow. And, and you went to Michigan to renew your, your, your license? That is correct. And once you get back tomorrow, are your, are your routes going to be between Liberal Kansas and Amarillo, Texas? That is correct. You'll be home every night for Jasmine? Yes. Is it fair to say that Gloria would not have been arrested for public intoxication had you not called the police a second time. I didn't call them the second time. Someone had contacted them. So some, somebody called them back. And I, and I apologize if I don't know if it's April 20th or April 21st, but in that time period, uh, Gloria was arrested for public intoxication, correct? Correct. And in that same time period, you suffered a heart attack and a mini stroke, correct? Correct. And you were put in the hospital, and I hope you were well cared for here in Amarillo. Is that correct? That is correct. Other than having your heart attack, and other than calling first responders when you discovered Gloria in the hotel unresponsive, have you done anything in your mind that merits the state having possession of Jasmine? Could you say that again? My phone. Absolutely. Let, let me make it. Let me make it more clear. What have you done to cause a danger to the physical health of Jasmine? absolutely nothing. What have you done to cause some sort of fear of Jasmine's safety? Absolutely nothing. Is there any risk that Jasmine is going to be trafficked for sexual purposes? Absolutely not. I would die before I ever let that happen. Have you ever abused or neglected a, another child? No. Have you ever sexually abused a child? No. Has CPS, and I use CPS, I think it's the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services right now, but I use CPS kind of as shorthand. Has CPS made any efforts with you to return Jasmine to your care? Have they made efforts? Yes. They 
like not like actual efforts efforts no have you been convicted of any domestic violence issues i was convicted one time but then it was uh dropped and that was years ago okay um the uh someone googled you when when jasmine was being born and they, they pulled up a michigan uh sex offender status tell the court a little bit about what happened with that how old were you and what actually happened so it was back on January 4th, 2004. Um, I was born in 1988, so I was 14 years old. My dad and I were on our way home from a hunting trip. It was two o'clock in the morning. I could not hold my bladder anymore. My dad pulled off on a dirt road. I stepped out to urinate and was arrested for public nudity, basically. It was urinating in public, gross indecency, and decent exposure. I got charged with criminal sexual conduct first degree in the state of Michigan. And I did not do any jail time. I had no court fines, court costs, no probation, nothing. It was basically, here's your charge. Get out of my courtroom. Gotcha. And I'll have the opportunity here in a minute to cross-examine uh, the investigator on this case. But is it your understanding that Michigan has no issues with you being around a hospital, around a school, or around children? You're allowed to be in all those places, correct? That is correct. Is there any reason why the judge should not send Jasmine home with you? Absolutely not. Judge, at this moment, I'm going to pass the witness. I may recall him, depending on how testimony goes, but at this point, I'm going to, I'm going to pass my client. Okay, very good. Uh, Ms. Zavala? Sorry. Um, okay, uh, Mr. Peterson, I think you just answered a question in response to your attorney about um, abuse or neglect of another child, and you said no. Now, previously, you said that one of uh, your rights were terminated to one of your children? That is correct. It was not because of abuse or neglect. That's the reason I had answered that question. Okay. Um, when when were your rights terminated to that child? I do not remember. That was a long time ago. Why were they terminated? They were terminated because I was unable to do services that were put out for me to do due to financial reasons. All, all four of the children had previously been removed by Michigan, correct? Yes. Okay. Why had they been removed? They were removed, again, as I had already previously stated. They were removed due to false allegations that were made against myself. The main reason was because Gloria was, of course, drinking and just not doing what she was supposed to do. She was constantly pawning the kids off on everybody else because she couldn't handle them crying, so on and so forth. How, how long ago was that? Again, I do not remember. It was a long time ago. So even with the history of losing all four children based on Gloria's behavior, you still felt it was safe to leave the baby with her? Have you ever heard of people changing over the years? Or if you'll answer the question, you're not a asking questions. Yes, to answer your question, yes. Okay. Um, you administered Narcan to Gloria, but you said you had no knowledge that, that she had ever taken anything like morphine, right? Not in the past. I was only, again, I was going off of what I was told by the next door neighbor. Okay. Can I have so, a breakout room for a minute with my attorney, please? Sure. Uh, Mr. Peterson, when the, the next door neighbor at the hotel told you she had taken morphine, um, you were able to administer the Narcan that you already had with you. That is correct. Okay. Why, why were you carrying Narcan? They give it out in Michigan for free. Michigan is a state where there is a lot of drug use. Plus, I'm also a licensed paramedic. What kind of training do you have to do to be a licensed paramedic? What kind of what? Training. In the state of Michigan, you have to take BLS and ALS classes to get ALS certified. And so in case you're not to... aware, in case you're not aware of what ALS is, it's advanced life support. Um, your doctor has released you for local routes, you said? That is correct, for light duty work. Okay. What did your doctor say about this five-day trip or six-day trip that you're on now? As He said, as long as I'm not doing anything extens uh, <clears throat> extenuating and I'm not having to unload my trailers, then he was okay with it. How long have you been working for Rocking Tea? Uh, since September of 2021? No, 22. September of 22. 
And previously, what has your work been for them? Like what kind of reps? You said previously or what I'm doing now? No, previously. Previously, I was over the road. Okay. Ever since my daughter was born, the company has uh, been working with me to be able to make me a local driver. So is there, where is there, is there office located in, in Amarillo? Yes, it's in Amarillo. Before, when you were the over the road truck driver, how much time did you spend in the actual office? Hardly any. I, w- I mean, we were there maybe once, once a week, once every other week. While, while you were in a bind and didn't have anybody else to take care of the baby, you, you gave the baby to the next, the people in the next door room at the hotel, correct? Object to form. Sorry, what was that? I object to the form, Judge. I don't think there's been any testimony that he gave the child to the next door neighbors in the motel. Okay, I'll, I'll rephrase. I'll rephrase. So when you had to go to the hospital, were you able to leave Jasmine with the people who were staying in the room next door? Yes, she was left with them per APD. At at that time, you weren't aware that 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 family had CPS history, correct? I knew they had it years ago, but I didn't know they had that they still had it recent because they still have their kids. So I had no clue that they had anything recent. Are are you aware that Ms. Smith does not have her children? She does have her children. Her children are there every day. Um. Are you aware that according to the the case last year, she's not supposed to have her children? Well, according to Amy, Casey's uh, caseworker or uh, co-worker, she has her children because Amy was just there the day before I left. And she has custody of all three of her kids. Okay, but there there was a lot that you didn't know about, about the people next door. Figuratively speaking, yes. Okay, so... So they're not going to play any part in, in child care going forward if your daughter was going to, to stay with you? Oh, absolutely not. Because on the 10th, I plan on moving to a different hotel because of the area that that hotel is in. So um, you said you've got two different daycares that you've talked with about, about taking her. I know you said you didn't remember the names. Where are they located? Here in Amarillo. Where? The one's on 26th Avenue, and the other one, I believe, is on, what the heck is the name? I I don't remember the street. I'd have to look it up again, and I can't do that on video court. And right now, you're you're about a day away from Amarillo? Uh, A little less than a day. I'll be there tomorrow morning. And so you're asking the court to return the child to you today at this hearing? No, as I have already spoken with my attorney and my attorney will get further into it for me, I would need the agency to hold her until I get home tomorrow morning. And if if neither of these daycares can pan out, then the, the girls at the office can, can keep her. And if they do not, I have permission to take her with me on the road. Okay. What are, what are the names of the girls at the office? Can I object to that, please? What does that have to do with anything? They're part of your plan. The court would be interested in who might be taking care of those kids. So I'd I'd like to know. I will give first names. I'm not going to give last names because I don't know the majority of their last names or how to pronounce them. Sure. So one of them would be Carly Schilling. She is the owner of the company. Uh, One of them would be Kat. Another one is Veronica. Another one would be um, McKessa, there's four different people I've talked to that have said that they would take care of her for me if needed. But most of them you don't know the last name of. I know their last names, but I am, I do not have their permission to give out their last names. So I'll put it like that. Okay. So, so you've had an experience recently where, where someone who was taking care of the baby had had some previous CPS history. Have you done background checks on these girls? No, I did not do a background check. They have kids. What it, you, y'all have lived here in um, Amarillo since September of 
22, is that what you said? Oh, Russell, you got muted again. That is a negative. We've lived here ever since April 20th when my daughter was born. Oh, I'm sorry. I guess the September 22 was when you started working for Rocking T. Is that right? That is correct. That's when I started with the company. Okay. Okay. But you only began living here in Amarillo when your daughter was born. That is correct. Okay. Earlier, you had said... We are at America's best value in, and you used we. Uh, you and Ms. Goucher have continued to live together after the removal of, of your child. That is correct, and that is only because I was still on medical release or medical leave from work and had nowhere else to go and no way to pay for anywhere else to go. I don't think my good looks would buy me a... Wait for a question, wait for a question, Russell. Just wait for a question. Your plan is to stay at America's best value until the 10th and then find another place. That is correct. Either that or renew more time on the room because Gloria will not be there. And as far as you know, where will Gloria be going? Uh, I'm under the impression that she will be going to treatment program. If not, then I will vacate myself from the property and away from her and I will raise my daughter on my own away from her. And you said that you've spoken with someone at America's Best Value and that, that you still will have the room? That is correct. Al said that I could stay because my none of the concerns were brought up against me. I guess witness. Mr. Ammons, do you have any questions? Yes, Judge. Mr. Peterson, when Gloria found out she was pregnant, was she riding on the truck with you on a daily basis? Yes. And uh, when you said over the road hauling, were you hauling dry goods coast to coast or can you give us an idea of where you were going? So it was basically refrigerated running Texas to California, California back to Texas. OK. And those are two, three day trips. Mm, day and a half, two days. OK. And were you again, you mentioned you were basically staying in your sleeper. Yes. I mean, stopping at truck stops, showering, eating, things of that nature. Correct. Okay. During that period of time, was Gloria having difficulties with the alcohol? I'm sorry, could you rephrase that? During the period of her pregnancy, was she having difficulties with the alcohol? No, I would not allow her to drink at all. She had absolutely no alcohol whatsoever. Okay. okay so prior to her discovering she was pregnant, would you say she had problems with the alcohol up to that point? She would drink, but she wouldn't overdo it. She'd have maybe two, maybe three a day and then be done. And you were with her all the time? Pretty much. All right. Now you're driving a reefer up to Liberal? That is correct. 53-foot reefer. What are you hauling? Meat? Ground beef. Okay. You come back empty? No. I go up with an empty trailer. I come back with a load. Gotcha. All right. Now... Your other four children, how old are they? Uh, 12. Uh, 12, 5, four, three. 4, and 3. Okay. When those kids were born, were you involved in their care when they were infants? I absolutely was, yes. Okay. Feeding, changing diapers, all of that. Correct. Okay. Your mom, you mentioned this to me, your mom in Florida is a retired neurosurgeon. Correct. And the man she's married to, tell me what he retired from. Husband, husband of mom in Florida, what did he retire from? Um, he had 32 years as um General Motors, and also military. And I mean, you feel very comfortable in their ability to care for those kids. Absolutely. All right. Now, the six months that you keep them, you were keeping them up in Michigan during the summer? No, we would stay down there with uh, my parents. Okay. I have nothing further, Judge. Mr. Trout, any and I, I got another text message. I apologize about that. 
anything further from the department? Um, Mr. Peterson, just a second ago, um, Mr. Hammonds asked you about your routes, and I, I don't know if you cut out a little bit or I didn't hear exactly what you said. Um, you are running routes, did you say, from California to Texas and back? Yes, it was uh, basically it was Oakland, California on the ports. Um, I'm one of like, because we have 90 some drivers here. I'm uh, there's only six of us that have a TWIT card that allows us access to the ports. Okay. And so you're, you were saying a trip from California to Texas and back is a day and a half? Yeah, about a day and a half, two days. I have a truck that's not governed and running out that way, speed limit's 80 mile an hour for trucks. Yeah. Do, um, do you, are you the only driver or does Ms. Goucher drive also? No, she does not drive. Okay. Um, about how many miles is it each way? I'm sorry? About how many miles is that each way? Uh, from Amarillo to there, don't quote me on this, please. Uh, about 1150, 1200. Each way? Correct. And you're making that and back in a day and a half. No, it takes a day and a half, two days to get there, and then day and a half, two days to get back. Okay. All right. So that's what I was trying to clarify, because either you're not sleeping or you're doing it in more than a day and a half. Oh, no, no. I, okay. I do it a day and a half, two days there, and then day and a half, two days back. Okay. Um, one thing I forgot to ask you about on the night that this all happened. Um, did you state to um, a paramedic or one of the officers um, as far as Gloria being unresponsive or passing out that this happens all the time? I do recall saying that. However, I don't know why I said that. Um, it was probably based off okay. of what she's done in the past. Okay. Uh, I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Anybody else have any additional cross-examination? Real, real quick follow-up, if I might, Judge. Sure, Vince. Right. Hey, Russell. Yes. Can you hear me? All right. Are you ever going to leave Jasmine with Gloria again? Absolutely not. Now, on the night you had your heart attack, did you drive yourself to the hospital? No, I did not. How did you get there? I was taken via of ambulance. Okay. Were you in any sort of state of mind to evaluate the people that were in the room next to y'all that ended up having Jasmine for a little bit? Before this incident, yes. During the incident, no. Would you ever leave Jasmine with those people again? Absolutely not. Absolutely not Judge. at Thank all. You. Thank you, Russell. Thank you, Judge. Anybody else have any cross? I, nope. I just have one follow-up, unless anybody else does. Go ahead. Um, the the stepdad that lives in Florida with your mom, is he the one that passed away on the 19th? No. Who is that? That would be the one that lives in Michigan. I pass on. Okay, the department may call its next witness. We would call um, Carly Bravo. Okay. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, and when you say here, what do you, where do you mean? Work, okay. Rocking T. And what is your position at Rocking T? I'm the chief operations officer. Okay. Are you hired by, or are you part owner of the company? What's the, what's your situation? I have partial ownership in the company. Okay. Um, and are you familiar with, um, I know you didn't hear all of the testimony that you, you came in a little late, but, um, with Mr. Peterson. He has informed us of some things. Okay, but um, are you, you're aware of who he is? Oh, yes, I am. Okay. And he's one of y'all's drivers? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, now, you're aware that he recently had a medical issue? Yes. And he has told us that he has been cleared to drive? Yes. Okay. Um, what What is his clearance at this point? Like, what he kind of routes, what can he do? Um, we're an OTR company, which means that our drivers primarily drive over the road. Okay. Um, just looking through his driving history, he's gone all over the states. Okay. Um, at this time, is he, do y'all have local routes? No, sir, we do not. Okay. Um, so all of your routes are out? As local as it would get is some Guyman, Oklahoma to Dallas, Texas loads. We okay. do have some that come to Amarillo, but not. Not often. Okay, so what it would entail would be leaving Amarillo, going to Guyman, picking up a load and going to Dallas. Yes. Right. And then does he run another load back to Guyman or? 
depending well, we don't have him on those loads. Um, okay. We don't have enough. Well, those are what we call local loads. We don't have enough local loads to keep someone busy on only local. Okay. Um, so if he testified earlier that he's on local routes, is that correct? That is not what he is hired for. That is incorrect. Okay. Um, is there any way that he can run a route right now and be home every night of the week? Um, I'd have to look at our forecast of loads, but that's that's not primarily something we could ever guarantee somebody. Okay. So it would possibly be maybe a couple nights a week or three or four nights a week, but not every night of the week. Correct. Um, is he running a, road right, a load right now for y'all? Yes. Yes, he is. Okay. And where was that load to? It picked up in Columbus, Ohio, and delivered to Cedar Falls, Iowa. He's on one right back. Okay. And yeah. I have another one from Ames to Amarillo. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Could we mute Mr. Peterson and Ms. Goucher from making comments while somebody else on the phone? No, because she's lying. Judge, you're, judge, you're, you're, muted. you're muted, Judge. Sorry, I was trying to mute everybody else. Okay. I think we've got that accomplished. Thank you, Judge. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you, Judge. Um, let me think was he one. medically cleared to run from here to Ohio to Michigan? Um, he said he had gone to Michigan to renew his license. Um, yes. But he's running a load from y'all back down. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Um, and I know it's kind of informal, but he um, running a load for y'all right now. And I know he has court to be in. Um, do y'all want y'all's drivers driving while they are on video and camera? No. Okay. Um, thank you, Ms. Brown. I'll pass the witness, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Noah. Thank you so much, Judge. Um, Car, is it Ms. Bowden? Did I pass it? Ah, did I, if, I, if I mess it up, I sure do apologize. You're okay. Um, you don't have any personal knowledge that Russell was a danger to the physical health of Jasmine, do you? No, I do not. You don't have any personal knowledge that Russell is a danger to the safety of Jasmine, do you? No, I do not. You don't have any personal knowledge that Jasmine could be a victim of trafficking if placed with Russell, sexual trafficking, correct? Correct. You don't have any knowledge on why the child was removed from Russell's care, correct? Only what Russell has told me himself. You don't have any personal knowledge that Russell has abused Jasmine, correct? That is correct. You don't have any personal knowledge that Russell has neglected Jasmine, correct? Correct. You don't have any personal knowledge that Russell has sexually abused another child, correct? Correct. And you don't have any knowledge of the reasonable efforts uh, Texas Department of Family and Protective Services may have made or not made to return Jasmine to Russell, correct? Correct. Thank you so much, ma'am. That's all the questions I have. Thank you. Before I forget it, I've just got a couple of questions I wanted to ask you. Does Mr. Peterson, is he an owner operator or do you own the cab that he's operating? We own the cab. So are there restrictions on who can be in that cab when he's doing y'all's work? Yes, sir. Would you allow an infant to be in the cab at any time on a load? No, sir. Um, he made mention that he was currently running a route from Liberal Kansas to Amarillo on a daily basis or fairly daily basis. Do you have such a route? Um, that route is an occasional load, um, but he wouldn't, that wouldn't be what we could guarantee him every day. How, about how often does that load occur? It's hit and miss. It would be anywhere from once a week to, I guess we could have it up to three times a week to once a month. Okay. Just so I understand, how does it work? Do you, you have a number of drivers that work for you, correct? Yes, sir. Do they bid on jobs or is there some kind of random assignment or how do you decide who gets which loads? Um, we try to stick to driver's preferences, but at the end of the day, it's kind of the loads that we receive from our customers. We've put with the person that's ours best fit that load. Okay. So do, do, like if there's an outfit up in liberal Kansas that uh, a beef processing plant that has ground beef that needs to come back to Amarillo, they, would they contact your company and then you'd look to see who's available and you'd send that person out on that load? The way it works, we have contracts with multiple 
customers, meat packing customers, the one that you're speaking about in Liberal, we don't have a say in what loads we receive. They send us the available loads that they have um, and they have to spread them across all of their customer base. And so it's just kind of whoever gets that load at the time is who is able to run it. Okay. And I grew up in Guymon, Oklahoma. Are you hauling pork from up there? We are. Yes, sir. <laughs> Seaboard. Is that still yes, the company? I haven't been up there in a while. But, um, and then I had one other question. Mr. Peterson had made mention that there might be uh, a possibility if he's unable to secure daycare that he would be able to leave the infant child there at your office. Is that a possibility? No, sir. We don't offer child care. But are you aware of anybody there that would be able to even take care of an infant while they perform their work duties at your office? No. Okay. Um, Ms. Zavala? Sorry. Um, I don't believe I have any questions of this witness. Okay. And uh, let's see. Uh, Mr. Hammonds? Does Rocking T have a building location in Amarillo or are you dispatching out of your home? We have a building location. It's on Pullman Road. And you have various dispatchers in the building? Yes, we do. About how many? Um, five. I mean, do you know, are any of them in the building with their young children at different times? Maybe the child's sick, couldn't go to daycare, things of that nature? Yes, we do allow that. Okay. Um, Judge, it looks like the father fell out. Okay, well, we'll uh, Vince is here to represent his interest. If he comes back on, I'll ask Rachel to let him back in. Vince, you might call him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nothing further, Judge. Okay. Daniel, any follow-up with this? I person? don't believe, Your Honor. I believe, I believe I'm with you. Does anybody have any objection to me allowing Ms. Broughton to go back to her business? Can, no. can I ask one more question? One, maybe sure. two. two but... Yeah, Vince, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sure. Th thank you. Hey, hey Kari, and uh, again, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing your first name or your last name. Uh, do you have other drivers that have children? Yes. Uh, in other words, um, Russell having a, a, a young child does not disqualify him from working for your company. That is correct. Has he been a good driver for you all? Yes, he has. That's all I have. Thank you so much. And yeah, get back there. Get back to work. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, Carly, I'll let you go and you can get off the call. You're welcome to stay on if you're just curious, but if you've got stuff to do, you're welcome to go. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brown. Uh, the department may call its next witness. We would call um, Gloria Gaffer. Um, the events that led to the removal, um, you were arrested one night for public intox, is that correct? Yes. And um, Mr. Peterson had a medical condition, heart attack, had to go to the hospital, correct? Yes, I was sitting in the back of the cop car when I saw him collapse in the parking lot. The cops okay. were the ones that called paramedics. Okay. Um, it's been said that you drank some beer. It's been said that um, you took some morphine that night. Um, can you tell us what you what you took that night? I had drank five beers, not meaning to. I had gotten a little too intoxicated to where I passed out and I got woke up by the Narcan and being in that drunken state, I mumbled, I have morphine pills, which I never do. I never have. I don't even know where to get those. Yeah. It was just when they asked me that it's just something that came out and I didn't even realize I had said it. So what you're, what you're telling the court is that you were completely unresponsive from drinking five beers and did not take anything else. Yes. And it took Narcan to wake you up. Yes. Okay. And you're aware that Narcan is used for drug overdoses, not alcohol. Yes. And it's not the um, last time I was ever like that was a long time ago, way before I even got pregnant. And it took the same thing to wake me up out of it back at back in Michigan before we were on the road. Okay. Um, do you know, kind of an odd question, but do you know how long, over how long of a period of time you had been drinking and how long you were unconscious? No, uh, I think I was only unconscious for like an hour, if that. Um, do you believe that is safe to be unconscious, drinking to the point of being unconscious with a 13-year-old baby in the room in a car seat? No. Okay. Um, I was just really stressed out with him not being here. I'm taking care of a whole bunch of things and her at the same time. It was just a bad day. 
So are, are you currently right now at the hotel at the Best Inn, America's Best? Yeah. Um, now, we heard some testimony earlier that um, y'all were getting kicked out of the hotel. Have you been notified of that? I am, yes. Okay. So when is that supposed to happen? Why, why are you still at the hotel if that's happening? I'm waiting on a friend to come and pick me up right now to take me to their place. Okay. Um, now, you're not from here, right? No. I'm so, from. So what friend are we talking about? Y'all haven't been here long, so what friend's coming to pick you up? Apparently, my dad. Who? My dad. Where, where is he? Me money, and he's going to get me a bus back. To where? Back to back to uh, Michigan to get a few things from the house. Okay. Um. So just just so I'm clear, a friend's coming to pick you up, but it's your dad, or is it your dad paying for bus fare and a friend's taking you to the bus station? Yeah, my dad's paying for bus fare, and a friend of mine's taking me to the bus station to get the bus. Okay. Where do you know this friend from? From here. Okay. Um, is it the people that were next door to you? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's Miss Smith? Yeah. Okay. Um, are you still having regular contact with the Smiths that are next door? Yeah, I'm talking to them every day. Okay. Um, do you know when you have to be out of the of the hotel? Tomorrow. Okay. Uh, so they're they're giving you one more night to stay there. Yeah. When is when is your bus headed back to Michigan? I'm not sure what time yet. It but it'd be way before uh, Russell gets home. Well, and I mean I didn't phrase that well. Is the bus leaving today? Tomorrow? Tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Okay. Um, so you're going to stay. So when you said you're waiting on a friend to come pick you up, you're actually staying in that hotel overnight, correct? Yes, until until right before like he gets back. Okay. Um, that way I'm not here, and he's got the room to himself and everything. So you said you're going back to Michigan to get something from the house. Are um, are you moving back to Michigan, or are you going to pick something up and coming back? What what is your plan? I'm not really sure yet. I just know I got to go to Michigan to our house. I got to grab some things from there and probably come back and get my own place. Okay. So you're planning. Shelter. So you're planning on coming back to Emerald. Yeah. I'll just stay in a shelter. Okay. Um, now we, you were here earlier when Mr. Peterson testified that um, y'all are not going to be together anymore. Is that correct? Yes. Is that your understanding also? Yes. Um, and so would you be coming back to Amarillo specifically because Jasmine's here? No. Okay. So why would you specifically be, if you're not with Mr. Peterson, who is here working and Jasmine. Oh, yeah. oh I misunderstood you. I'm sorry. I misunderstood you. Yes. It would be because of Jasmine. Okay. All right. So you, so your only reason, only connection to coming back to Amarillo would be the child. Yes. Um, do you believe that you need to go to some sort of rehab? That or counseling. I can do counseling. Are you going to try to? Mm -hmm. I mean, I know you said you can, but are, is that something you plan on doing? Yeah, I'm willing to do counseling. And, um, are, you, are you willing to go to inpatient rehab? Uh, uh, yes. I mean, it, it's up to you. I'm just asking, is that in order to be reunited with your kid, with your, your newborn child, are you willing to do these things? Yes. Um, are you saying that just because you think you need to, or do you think that you need? No, I think I need to. You need some sort I, of help. I think I need some sort of help right now and okay. whatever it, it takes to be with her. Okay. Um, one question, during the... Um, investigation uh, department asked you to drug screen for them correct mm -hmm. um, and I believe your statement was when asked to do a hair follicle test I will do anything for my child but that um, what, what is the reason behind that I know it, it, it's gonna sound stupid but I didn't want a bald spot in my head okay. um, it's not because you're worried you'll test positive for anything 
No, I won't. Okay. Is your only um and you've had a you've recently had a child, so there may be something in your system that the hospital gave you or something gave you, but you your testimony is that you don't take any type of drugs, it was only alcohol. Yes. Okay. They um, gave me they gave me uh, a prescription for ibuprofen, like Russ, Mr. Peterson said. Yeah. I wasn't able to get that um filled. And the only thing they gave me during labor was fentanyl. Yeah. Okay. But no, I I don't have morphine pills. I've never once taken morphine pills. It was just something that I mumbled. I don't and know. Where... And Miss Smith and them next door to you didn't give you anything. No. Okay. Um, do you do you believe that you acted responsibly with the child when you had her? Yeah, except for that day. Except for the day that you passed out and left in a room with her for at least an hour. Yeah, Perfect. it was only that one incident. But before that, I was able to handle her, take care of her, do what I had, change her diapers and everything just fine. Okay. Um, do you think when you were at home alone with a less than two week or right at two week old baby um, that you is responsible to be drinking five, four, five, six, 24 ounce beers? No. Um, I take full responsibility for that mistake and it will never happen again. And now we talked a little bit about CPS history in Michigan with Mr. Peterson. Um, I'll kind of ask you the same questions. Um, he said that you were the mother to all the children. Mm -hmm. okay. um, have y'all had more than one CPS case in Michigan? No. That's the only one. Yeah. Um, and his mother has all four. Yes. And were they officially adopted? Yes. Okay. Um, have y'all ever had any CPS investigation? Not necessarily an open case where you had to work services, but a open investigation that they looked into allegations? Not that I know of. Okay. Um, I know they've had us do services to try and get the others, but they and she, his mom ended up adopting them. When you say the others, what do you mean? Or I meant the one that I'm like so confused right now. Was the I'm one case involved all four children? No, it only it only involved the one. Okay, so did y'all turn over the other three children to his mother? Mm -hmm. Okay, so the so. <clears throat> Sorry, my text message came in. Uh, um, so y'all one CPS case involved one child, and the other three y'all just turned over to the mother. They were not involved in the CPS case. Right. Okay. Um. Now, did you work services during that case? During, yeah, during that one, I did parenting classes. Um, what was it else? What else did they have me do? It was just parenting classes they were having me do. Okay. Did you complete all your services? No, they ended up um, terminating my rights before I was even able to. Okay. I got halfway through the classes and then that's when we ended up having court and they said we're terminating. So how, how long was that case open? Was that a that year? Thing, that one, because that was with our first one. With your first child? Our uh, oldest, oldest child. That case was going on pretty much I'm going to say six months to a year. Okay. Um, and was that a, was he an older child or was that a newborn child? Where, how old was he at that time? She, she's the oldest. Um, it started when I, I left my adopted parents. Uh, she was like six months when it started. Okay. Uh, and he's how old now? Twelve? Is that she, she is twelve now. Twelve. Okay. All right. Um. She was the only one that a CPS case ever happened with. Okay. Um. 
And I don't know that I asked Mr. Peterson this. Were y'all living in Michigan before you came to Texas? Is that where you yeah. came straight from? Never lived anywhere in between? No. Okay. Um, I was on the road in the truck, though, with him the whole pregnancy. Okay. Um, now, he said that y'all were not living here until the baby was born. So in the nine months you were pregnant, um, and y'all were living in the cab, was that just on the road and y'all were just here for the last, y'all only been in Amarillo for about the last month? Yeah, we've only been here the last month. We were living in the truck, the cab, the whole time. Okay. Um, Going back and forth. Hey, now you, you said a while ago that you, you thought you need help. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Do you think that the child needs to be returned to you at this time or do you need to get help first? I think I should probably get some help before she comes back. All right. And you're willing to work with the department and services if that is yeah. it. Okay. And you understand these cases last standard up to about a year. Yes. Okay. I'll pass the witness at this time, Ron. Huh? Mr. Hammonds, I'm sorry. Thank you, Judge. Gloria, uh, this is T.D. Hammonds. We spoke on the phone mm -hmm. last, last week. Are you committed to going and getting help, whatever that consists of, if it's intensive counseling or 90 to 120 days at some uh, intensive rehab facility? Would you be willing to do that? Yes, I'll, I'll do whatever I have to. Okay, throughout the course of your marriage to Mr. Peterson, have you been working anywhere or do you, were you staying no. at home with the kids? I'm a stay-at-home mom. I can't work. I got uh, disabilities and scoliosis in my back. Okay, are you receiving any kind of disability? No, I keep trying to apply for it, but they keep denying me for some reason, but I'm okay. going to keep trying. As far as your ability right now to go out and buy yourself food or I see you have a cigarette in your hand, do you have any cash in your pocket right now? No. Okay. How do you pay for things? I've been uh, returning a couple of things that quit working to Walmart and got a in-store credit Walmart card and bought my cigarettes with that. And then we have food stamps, which hits tomorrow. Okay. But before that, let's go back to April 20th. I mean, I realized Russell was driving up to that point, but over the last month, how have you paid for things? The the, the Smiths next door have helped me out with a couple things to get. They've helped me out with a couple, what's the money? Okay. And this is husband and wife? No, no. They're um, brother, sister, and niece. Okay. The time that you've been there at the hotel, the month that you've been there at the hotel, have they had children living in that room with them? Yes. How old? The whole time. Um, one is five or one is eight. And then the other two, I think, are like nine. Okay. And they have their own vehicle. I mean, they're taking these kids to school. No, the bus comes here and picks them up. And then their dad, their, uh, the girl's real dad picks the girls up. But her son, he takes the bus. Okay. Over the course of the last week, have you been purchasing any alcohol and drinking alcohol? No. All right. I have nothing further, Judge. Ms. Zavala? So you said that the previous CPS case only involved the, the child who's 12 now? Yes. How long ago was that, that the, the case was going on? It was before she even turned a year old. She was like six months. Okay. And then I think if I've got the ages right, the other kids are five, four, and three? Yes. When did they go and live with the grandmother? Last year. No, a couple, actually a couple of years ago. I'm not sure. I don't remember what year it was. How, how old were the kids at the time they went to go live there? I don't remember. So the youngest one's three. Was that child a baby or infant or? Yes, he was a, uh, he was two years. So it was just a year ago that they went to go live there? I 
I'm, I'm sorry. There, I'm sorry. It's just there's so I have so many kids. It's hard to keep track. So was it a, a year ago that they went to go live there? They went to go live with their grandma two years ago. Is that because there was a CPS investigation? No. I'm sorry, I'm having trouble here. No, the only CPS investigation was with our oldest. That was only because of my adopted family at the time. So the grandparents have only adopted the oldest one? No, the, the people that have our oldest one, they are my aunt and uncle who adopted me. Okay. And so so that's the that's a 12 year old. And then are there three living in Florida or four living in Florida? Three. Three. Well, my adopted no, it is four because they're down there too. Who? My adopted parents who have the oldest. Okay. When's the last time you've seen the five, four, and three year old? About two years ago when we were last down there or last year. So about two years ago when you were down there or last year? Last year. We had gotten a, a, a run down there and we were able to visit them. Were you surprised um, that that you had gotten Narcan when you woke up? No. Why not? Was I surprised that I got woke up by Narcan? Yeah, that that you had gotten you had received Narcan. Was that surprising to you once you realized what had happened? Oh yeah, once I uh, realized what had happened during that whole situation, yeah, it, it shocked me. So you had mentioned that one time before it took Narcan to wake you up. When was that? Before I got pregnant. Oh, so back in uh, June or May of last year, right before we left Michigan, because I ended up pregnant in July. That's what it is. Mr. Nowak? Thank you, Judge. My name is Vince Nowak, and I represent Russell, who's the father of Jasmine. You understand that, correct? Yes. Okay. Gloria, if I say nothing else to you today, and if you do nothing else today, please, please, please remember these initials, DWC. That stands for Downtown Women's Center. It's a local uh, not-for-profit here in Amarillo, and they will do wonders for you. I, I Please, the minute we're done with all this, Google DWC, call them. They can help you. But I do have a few, I have a few questions for you, if that's okay. Yes. Okay. Now, when you first started testifying, and I don't know if it was April 20th or the 21st, but on one of those two days, Gloria, you just told the court that you drank five beers not meaning to. Do you remember that testimony? Yes. But, but, but you drank those five 24-ounce beers, correct? Yes. Russell wasn't there, correct? No. Russell didn't force you to drink, correct? No. In fact, Russell wants you to stop drinking it. Drinking, correct? Yes. Okay. And we... And this is not something easy to do, especially when we're on YouTube, but you do have a drinking problem, correct? Yes. And and you will you'll call Downtown Women's Center and see how they can help you? Yes, I will. Okay. Now, to your personal knowledge, Russell is not a threat to the health of Jasmine, is he? No. And Russell is not a threat to the safety of Jasmine, correct? No. no. So you're agreeing with me that he's not a threat, correct? Oh, yes. I'm agreeing with you. Yes. Yes. He's not. Now, Russell didn't do anything to put Jasmine in harm's way, correct? Correct. And, and you know, Gloria, this is a tough one, and but I have to ask this question. It was your drinking that put Jasmine in harm's way, correct? Yes. And you're willing to get help for that, correct? Correct. And I, I, I applaud you for that. And, and I, here's another tough question. Um, you've had a few drinks today, correct? No. Okay. Well, congratulations. That's a good start. The first day is a good start. Um, I didn't either. I ha no, I haven't touched it. Mm -mm. Now, when Russell had his heart attack and when you were arrested, neither one of y'all made the decision to put Jasmine with the Smiths, correct? Because circumstances were happening and that's just what happened, correct? 
Correct. Okay. Now, to your knowledge, Russell will never let Jasmine stay with the Smiths again, correct? Correct. To your knowledge, Russell's going to come back to Amarillo and be the best dad he can for Jasmine, correct? Correct. And then you're going to promise the court and me and Russell and Jasmine that you're going to get help, correct? Yes. I, I, I think I'm probably repeating myself, but I want to make sure I cover the elements. <laughs> to your knowledge, Russell has never abused or neglected another child, correct? Correct. And Russell has never sexually abused another child, correct? Correct. Is To your personal knowledge, Russell is the best caregiver right now for Jasmine, correct? Yes. And that is what you would like the court to do is to return Jasmine to Russell, correct? Yes. And then order you to work some services, which you're willing to work, correct? Yes. Okay. Judge, I'll pass the witness. Thank you so much. Ms. Goucher, you said that y'all are, that you're currently on um, food stamps, is that correct? Yes. Um, are they still active right now or are y'all having to re-sign up for them? We're going to, they're active right now. We'll just have to transfer it down here. Okay. So they haven't been cut off at any time? No. I also have her on WIC. Okay. Um, now, I hate to keep arguing on. I just want to make sure I'm straight on a couple of things. We discussed the Narcan earlier. Ms. Zavala asked you a couple extra questions. And were you surprised that you were giving that? that you were given Narcan after you came to and kind of realized what was going on. Yes, I was. Okay. But earlier you had told me that this has happened before and Narcan was the only thing that woke you up. I've been surprised every time I get woke up by it because I don't know what's going on. Can you tell us how many times you've been woke up by Narcan? Twice. Just twice? Just this one and before. Okay. Um, because I don't usually get to that extent. I usually can, like Mr. Peterson stated, drink two or three and just stop. Now, I don't, I, I don't think we have asked you this question. I know we've talked about the prior CPS in Michigan. What brought that case on? Why, why were y'all involved with CPS then? That, at that time, I'm not exactly sure. I just know I... Uh, Oh, I was living with my mom and dad and I'm having a prior CPS case and everything because they put on, they got put on the uh, registry for child abuse and neglect toward us. And I wasn't supposed to have a baby around them. Okay. So you're saying it was for abuse and neglect is why the case started. It was because, and yeah, because I was around my, my biological parents and they were on the registry for that and they, they weren't supposed to be around kids. Okay. Now, earlier, when Ms. Peterson was testifying, he said it was not for abuse and neglect. So was the case, that's what the case was as far as abuse and neglect. Yes or no? I'm not even exactly sure what the case was for. I just know that they told me that I couldn't have her around my parents. Okay. Um, and because I had no other place to go, she had to stay there. Were you and Mr. Peterson living together at the time or were y'all not living together? At the time? No, I was with her by myself with my parents. Okay. All right. um, he, was on, he was on the road. Okay. Um, you heard some testimony earlier from Mr. Peterson and then from Ms. Broughton that um, it is not guaranteed that he will be able to be home every night. Did you hear that? Yeah. Okay. And that there aren't really any local routes for that. Yeah, and I don't know why she said that because. Okay, that's just yes or no. Um, did so? Do you think it's best at this time to give the child back to Mr. Peterson, um, even though he knows he won't? He doesn't know whether he will be home each night or not while this is yes, going. Yes, I do. You do. Okay. Um, I'll pass with the child. Ms. Goucher, I wanted to ask you a question. A minute ago, you said you were having a hard time keeping track because you've got so many children. Other than the four children we've talked about, do you have other children? No. So the only four children you have are the 12-year-old that's been adopted and then the other three? Yeah, and Jasmine. And Jasmine. Oh, a total of five. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I just wanted to clear that up. Let's take a five-minute bathroom break and come back. <laughs> 